My name is Arun, and you join me at the shop for Driven Diary, episode 21. What is Driven Diary? Well, it's a diary. It's the documentation of my life as a mission-driven automotive entrepreneur. I own three automotive businesses, and I hope to grow a billion-dollar automotive services empire. This video is going to start out a little different from most where every video you've seen up until this point really just documents little clips from my day-to-day -day automotive entrepreneurship life. I wanna start off this video by highlighting a current event in society that I believe we need to shine more light on. And it's a big current event. Now, some of you are gonna call me a conspiracy theorist, some of you are gonna think I'm crazy, but I want you to listen. I want you to just have an open mind to the possibility that what I'm saying is true. And it's, it's not good. It's not easy to talk about. And I would say that I became a little bit more enlightened to current events in 2020, like a lot of people. A lot of people went from just living their lives, generally in a peaceful way, to seeing how government can massively impact our lives in a very short amount of time, whether that be through mask mandates, vaccine mandates, stay at home orders, whatever it is, all of those things created a ton of strife, a ton of conflict, and a ton of disagreement in a world where information is readily available, but you don't know who to trust. And that's where I feel we are at right now is that it is so hard to believe really anything that you read online that is different from what you're seeing out of your own two eyes. Your own experience is really the only thing that you can rely upon to be at least somewhat factual for you to base your opinions and your actions upon. And so I encourage you to listen to, to my factual experiences, compare them to your own, and see if you truly believe in what I'm talking about or if you have a different belief. And if you do have a different belief or you do agree with me, leave it in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. In 2020, we saw a ton of conflict. It did not appear to be coming from a real source. When I look at what my experience with COVID was, I got sick for three days I had a fever, I lost my sense of smell and taste for a week afterwards. It was not that bad. Pretty much everybody around me at some point has gotten COVID, vaccinated or not, and we're still alive. Most of the people who passed away with or without COVID, and I'm not sure if I trust any statistics around that, but supposedly were the elderly, the obese, and those with pre-existing conditions. So basically, a sickness killed weak people. That's happened a lot of times in our lives, and the world has never shut down as a result of it before. This was the first exertion of government control that has continued through proliferation of the media and through our day-to-day -day lives of trying to create more conflict, more issues among every single opinionated topic out there, whether it be race, gender, abortion, politics, religion. The things we're not supposed to talk about are now the things that are pushing all of us apart. So what have we seen in the last few years? We've seen huge increases in inflation, huge increases in tax, huge increases in crime, huge increases in a disunity among the populace, and a general demoralization of the United States. Is this by design? I believe it is. That's the conspiracy theory, if you wanna call it that. I believe that what has happened with all of those negative effects of the last few years have been created by the people who control much of how we live our lives, whether it be the government or the media. And all of those things encompass making us worse human beings. And I do not want to be a worse human being. I have been there before. I was an alcoholic, I was suicidal. I wanted to end my life. 
I tried to end my life multiple times. And it was only once getting sober, realizing that there is a better path to living, and then living that path, that I have come to be in a place of self-empowerment where I believe that it is worth me sitting in front of this camera and talking to you. That it is worth pursuing my entrepreneurial dreams until I die. That it is worth raising a family no matter what the consequences in today's crazy society. I'm taking steps forward with courage because I believe in myself. I believe in my sovereignty and my independence in the world. But I believe that most of us out there do not see that. Because you're playing into the powers that be. They want you to commit crimes. They want to tax you into oblivion. They want you to be afraid. Why would why would the leadership of our society want that unless they want to control you, unless they want to make you dependent upon them? The alternative is that you are wealthy, is that you are healthy, is that you are confident in yourself, is that you have a strong community around you that you believe in and that holds you accountable, and that you have security. What do those things sound like? Those sound like all the levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That sounds like what has been scientifically proven that humans want. And it's being stripped of us. There is a systematic approach to stripping that of us. Now, if you listen to the We Are Driven podcast, which is my podcast that I host with Dan LaRue, it comes out every Sunday and Wednesday on Apple and Spotify. You will have heard me talk about something similar to this before. You will have heard me talk about the fact that 2024 is a disruption event year. That this year, things will happen in our society that will attempt to derail any semblance of the historical successful United States. Now, why is that? Because this is an inflection point. This is an election year. This is a time when it, there is a possibility that those powers that be are eradicated. Because there are enough people like me out there who are speaking up, who are aware of what's going on, who see that there is manipulation going on behind the scenes. And that we want to stop it. And so, this disruption event will come in a few different ways. It could be another illness, another disease, another COVID. It could be the growth and expansion of the wars going on in the Middle East. Or it could be the most destructive political race ever. And it will not be between a feeble old man who cannot remember his own name and Donald Trump. It will be, again, hitting the cords of divisiveness in our society. So what do I mean by that? That if a woman of color runs for the presidency, as Michelle Obama has just announced, who may not be the most qualified, then we will have a problem. Because there will be, I don't know, 50% of the population or more that may believe in her, that may believe in that as leadership. But if you look at the policies, the policies that leadership is enabled and empowered to put in place, you will see that what Trump did during his four years is better than what any Democrat has done in my entire life, or any other Republican for that matter. So let's take into account what I just said. If you go out and say that Michelle Obama should not be president, then you will be sexist or racist. It's kind of guaranteed, no matter what the policies are, if you say that Trump should be the president, then you're automatically a racist because that's what it was before. Or you're stupid because you want to build a wall 
over our open borders, letting anybody in who does not speak our language and who does not care about committing crimes in excess. Or you just don't see that he's corrupt, though that document was proven false. So, look, now I've said it all. 2024 will be a disruption year where we have the possibility of being shredded as a population within the household and not. Man versus woman, black versus white, and we don't need that. If you look on the street, on the day-to-day -day level of your life, there's not much in the way of sexism and racism anymore. And there is, I will acknowledge, it does exist, but not in the systemic level that you're all being told that it exists. There is equal opportunity for all. Opportunity does not equate to results. And if you go out and earn your life, you will live a much better life. No matter who you are, no matter where you started, if you don't let any excuses get in your way, it will be a better life for you. That's all I got. If you agree, like I said, please leave a comment. If you do not agree, also leave a comment. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I don't know what I'm talking about? Or is there a possibility that what I just said is right, that there is an engineered divide in this country that is going to end it all and we will be taxed into oblivion and made dependent upon a government that sucks the life from us. I don't want that. I love my freedom. I do not want to give it up. So that's all I got, as I just said already. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dire situation in my mind, but the solution is simple. Do everything you can to be independent. That doesn't mean you have to start a business. That means that you take control of your career and you say, this is what I want to do. Here's where I can add value and then go do it, add value. If you feel so inclined and you have a strong risk appetite, you go start your own business. You take on that liability and you work your fucking ass off to make it successful. If you are out of shape, if you are sick, get in shape, eat better, go to the gym, take care of yourself, get sober, stop taking drugs, stop drinking alcohol, take care of yourself, make yourself physically capable and build your relationships so that you have a strong community to rely upon. None of us can do this on our own, but the community, the neighborhood, those elements are nearly gone from our society. Be part of city council, be part of the, the family councils and school, participate in your community and be independent. And if you believe that you are one of the driven individuals of society, then step the fuck up. You are no longer allowed to make excuses for yourself. Step up, become the leader you were meant to be, work hard, earn, lead, live an amazing life, and help get control back. Get control back into your hands. We don't need these levels of taxes. We don't need to be the world's police. We don't need to be the refugee camp for the rest of the world. We can be a sovereign nation that is proud, that is massively prosperous, and that lets everybody who live here lead the best life that they can. I want that for all of us. So, now that all that heavy stuff is out of the way, in this week's video, I go up to Seattle, I resurrect the S55 AMG that I bought back in November. Then I go to Houston, where I cannot tell you what I did. And then I went back to the Bay Area for two days of running the shop, 
And then I got extra proud about my squats. Let's get to the video. Monday morning, we're resurrecting the AMG. It's got a dead battery. It's completely frozen. It's uh, nine degrees here this morning, but we're gonna get it running. Three jump packs later, the old girl's running again. <laughs> Love this thing, weirdly. Monday afternoon in the Seattle area visiting one of my clients up here um, and I'm in the S55 and it's a very comfortable very refined vehicle and uh, I've made an observation recently which is the M3 that I now miss quite a lot having sold it recently made a big deal when you pushed it hard it was loud it had jerky shifts and it could break really hard and it was a very exciting car to push hard. I now have the Passat W8 and this and the Passat does not make a big deal about going fast. It is about the same volume whether you're pushing really hard or not. Uh, it's a manual so I can't really like I mean, I can do harder shifts, but it just doesn't really like it. You know, it, the, the clutch on that is, is quite sensitive and it just wants to be shifted normally. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't want banging gears. And then this thing, I hit a hundred miles an hour earlier and I barely noticed like this is, this is some luxury speed in this S55 AMG. And that's exactly what it's designed for. Uh, so what do you expect? Um, but I'm trying to sell this as well. Let's see if I can get it sold today, the only day here I am in Seattle and I've got a few conversations going on on Facebook Marketplace. We'll see if any of them wanna show up today and buy this wonderful car. That's it for early Monday afternoon. We are in Houston and you saw we were in Seattle, got the S55 up and running, visited with my client for a day, helped them out with some things, and then uh, I got a text yesterday afternoon saying we may not even be coming here, and uh, the, the client that we were going to be seeing in Houston may be uh, looking to postpone the trip. The weather here apparently yesterday was very bad, uh, but we ended up coming along anyways, but I woke up to a text message saying my flight was delayed. So I got a nice slower paced morning, got to go to the airport an hour and a half later. It was a nice like pre-planned delay at least. They texted me like before I woke up saying, hey, your flight's gonna be an hour and a half late. And that was fine. I got here in time for our meeting this evening and I got to go to the Washington Department of Licensing and register my truck. So it was all in all a productive day. Nice trip to Houston. It's in the 20s here as well. So it's been a, a very cold few days here around the country. And uh, fortunately, I guess it was snowing yesterday. It's not snowing today. Got a dinner meeting to get to tonight. And then tomorrow we're visiting our client site. And then it'll be back to the Bay Area Wednesday evening. The shop so far this week has not occupied much of my brain because if I let it, I would drive myself crazy with wanting to micromanage everything, getting nervous, kind of just being preoccupied when there's really nothing I can do from all the way over here. Um, so I, I prefer the approach of just saying, you know, they've got it, the team's got it at the shop, everything's under control, and I can focus on what I am doing in the moment, which is... A good stress reduction tactic does it sometimes probably mean that I am too relaxed about certain things yeah I would say so I think uh, as far as which way the pendulum swings on that one I get bit sometimes because I'm just not even supervising enough um, so that's a balance I always have to try to strike and nobody's perfect but here I am on the road working the second job as a consultant not just a automotive shop owner but also 
helping automotive businesses with mergers and acquisitions, investments, structuring, their books, really wide range of, of stuff I've helped some automotive companies with over the past five years since I started, actually six years now, since I started Driven Performance Advisors. So that's what we're doing today and tomorrow. We're getting to know a company that we're going to try to help sell later this year, and that's, I'm very excited for it. Good, uh, good company, good people. We'll get to know them more tonight, more tomorrow. And it was a nice, smooth travel day. It's nice to get back on United Airlines. I don't fly them as much as I used to when I lived in San Francisco, but I do like United. I think they run a good, run a good airline. Good customer service, good customer experience. They, they like to reward you for continuing to use their service, I think, more than any other airline does. With that, on to my next meeting. Just a quick note, I can't record when I'm on a confidential client site helping somebody sell their business, but you're gonna see a very, very short clip here with a semi-truck turbo. That's all I can show you. Let's get back to it. It is Thursday morning, and we're busy. We are really busy, and it's great, except I'm down a guy today. Somebody called in sick, so I only got two techs to fill a very large space. But we got a lot of cars coming through here, so it is uh, hurting our, our lack of throughput, but we will get through it. Uh, I didn't record a single video yesterday, and I basically woke up, worked out, uh, did a, a decent morning routine that I could do in a hotel room in Texas, 20 degrees outside, and then spent seven hours meeting with our client out there, very excellent day of meetings, and then got on a plane and came back to San Francisco. Now we're back at work, so I'm, I'm here for two days operating the shop. Got a, a few calls with, with other clients for, for Schwartz Advisors that we gotta get through. And then I'm back on a plane to Dallas on, uh, on Sunday. I'm there till Wednesday. So a couple of trips to Texas, um, and that's, uh, that's really disrupting the, the flow at the shop, but it is going well here, so I can't complain. Just gotta get the cars in and back out again profitably. That is the formula, that's what I got my guys focused on. Work is really picking up, we're getting a lot of phone calls, so all in all, very good. And in other news, the S55 will be showing up here on a truck today, which I am very excited for, and I might even take it home. So, that's it for Thursday morning, we get back to work. That was fast. So I bet this guy thinks he's being a baller. 10 grand, I gotta spend 10 grand on this, but unfortunately that's worth three, that's 800 bucks. That's gonna be another thousand, that's 2000, that's a thousand, and that's before labor. And not to mention a re-gear of his differential. Sorry, Patrick, you're looking at like 15 to 20 on this one. I have a confession to make. I sold a W126 420 SEL 1989 Mercedes uh, back in January of 2023. And I owned that car from November of 2023. This I bought in November 2023. Sorry, I bought the last one in November 22. I bought this one, November 23, and I'm trying to sell it January 24. So I seem to have a thing about spending my winter with an S-Class that I barely drive. I think I probably put 20 miles on the 89. I put 100 miles on this one. 
but I love it. I still think about that 89. I still think about that 89 a lot. Like I want another one. I have the bring a trailer notifications on. If you go to the very beginning of the Driven Diary YouTube feed, you will find a video where I go through that car. Now I'm trying to sell this one. And you know, it's distracting me. It's literally distracting me every day or every minute. Like I'm, I'm walking in the shop right now to like go turn off the lights and go home. But instead I'm like, you know, look at these wheels. They just fit so nice. They're so wide in the freaking wheel well. Like they're kind of perfect fitment. And it's so comfortable. And it just drives so nice. It's super powerful. The suspension's good on it. Shit. If only it weren't a time bomb of electrical and hydraulic issues. <sighs> but man, I just love cars. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point I want to make. I love cars. I love cars a lot. I love everything about them. I love how much I think about them. <sighs> and that's why I'm going to win in this business. <laughs> it's passion. It's what it takes. So apparently earlier this week, these were found out here. And that camera's been knocked down. Because some people behind the fence over here were throwing stones and then they might have even broken into the fence so back here ain't exactly full of valuables so not really the end of the world but still don't like that some fm jazz an amg and a belgian malinois and a nice drizzly Saturday morning. <sighs> Let me go into the garage where I can speak freely without waking up Evelyn. Saturday morning. Saturday morning and I am squatting a good, you know, 245. And it's not a lot of weight, but it is the most weight that I have squatted in a while. And I feel strong, but I slept in this morning till 5.30. I woke up at three after falling asleep at seven last night and hadn't plugged in my phone, hadn't brushed my teeth, hadn't done anything the night before. Um, definitely am probably a bit sick, but that doesn't stop anything. I was delayed against my will this morning and last night, but that doesn't stop anything. I'm sleeping in till 5.30 when I'm sick on a Saturday. What the fuck are you doing? Anything less than that is pathetic. And if you're watching this and you want a good life, a great life that you're really truly satisfied with at the end of the day and you have that drive within you that makes you not satisfied, then this is what it takes. And you should stop wasting your time. Now, I didn't record much yesterday and I'm gonna edit the diary this morning. So admittedly, this is a short storytelling week, but you will have seen at the beginning of this video my thoughts on current events. Um, and I'll leave it with this, that the idea of becoming the best version of yourself is, is almost no longer a, a desire reserved for a small percentage of the population, but it is something that is imperative for all of us to pursue. All of you watching this, it is imperative to pursue the best version of yourself that is financially independent, that is physically independent, and that is emotionally independent. That version of you is not codependent on anyone. That version of you is not waiting for government handouts or a tax break. 
or your job to give you a 5% raise. Independence. Independence. That is the word that I will leave you with today. And that's it for Driven Diary episode 21. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, leave a comment with any feedback that you have. And stay driven.